Okay, so uh, what I would like to cover for this lecture is going to be, let's see, get my pen pad out here, we've got immunity. However, we want to differentiate between active immunity, active versus passive. Two, two types of immunity, so we're just looking at two different types of immunity, uh, major differences between the two. So let's talk about the difference between the two. We'll, we'll, we'll try and keep it on one uh, slide because it'll be easier to pay attention to. So we've got, uh, we've got antibodies. Antibodies A, Bs, those will be my antibodies. This is where we really set these two apart and this kind of determines the characteristics of each. For active immunity, we're going to have, uh, we're going to make our own. We're going to make our own. Active immunity, we make our own antibody. So it's not going to be as fast. We're going to see an antigen and our body's going to say, we need antibodies against it. And if there are not preformed antibodies already in our bloodstream, we're going to have to make our own. And we're going to have a very robust response. We'll create memory cells. So that way, the next time we see this antigen, we'll be able to start kicking out some antibodies right away. However, for passive immunity, we're going to be given uh, antibodies. They're not going to be made from B cells, so we're not going to have the memory response that's formed. However, we'll have them right away. So we're going to have a slow response. We're going to have a fast response. Okay, so we've got uh, some different examples here. Uh, we'll have for active immunity, we'll have exposure. So we're exposed to a bug, a microbe of some sort. Our body doesn't like it. We'll create antibodies against it. So exposure to something. And then also vaccines. So uh, like an example would be a live attenuated vaccine can cause an active immunity against that uh, vaccine product. We'll create some antibodies. We'll create a nice robust response. So that way the next time we see it, uh, we'll be able to react to it better. A passive immunity, uh, some examples of how it is. Uh, it's gonna be like IgG from the placenta. Uh, the mother typically gives uh, its baby uh, immunoglobulins when it's in utero, uh, and those types will be IgG. You're also gonna have IgA, and that's gonna be mucus membranes. Uh, look with the scribble there, mucous membranes. Then also we've got uh, IVIG. So immunoglobulins given intravenously, and that's gonna be for prophylaxis or for treatments of, uh, of certain diseases. So now I'm gonna break these, this is the very basics of each. Now I'm gonna uh, kinda go through the process. And I think it's gonna be easier to start with passive. Oop, not passives, not like it matters. I just wanted to show off my cool erase function. I just got a draw pad today and I'm testing it out. I think it's pretty cool so far. All right, so we've got passive immunity. Now let's, I've already said that this is gonna be a fast immunity. So why is it fast? Well, we've got a person here. I'll do an example. We've got a person. All right, and we're going to give him IV I G. Oop. My pen function is a little weird. Because remember, IVIG was part of our passive immunity. So what is IVIG? Well, what we can do is we can get immunoglobulins. We can separate immunoglobulins that are that have been preformed. It can either be human or animal or synthetic, uh, but we've got immunoglobulins. And we're going to take those and we're going to inject them. So IV. So IVIG. So we're going to give them intravenously. And what this will do is it'll put those antibodies immediately into the bloodstream. Our body doesn't have to synthesize them. It doesn't have to create the B cell. It doesn't have to differentiate into a memory cell. It doesn't have to proliferate that B cell, start secreting antibodies. Those antibodies eventually will spread into the bloodstream. No, it doesn't have to do any of that. We're going to immediately give immunoglobulins. So let's say this person's infected. Oh wait, 
they shouldn't be smiling we should probably get rid of that they are infected they're not happy they're sad okay so we're gonna give them an immediate antibody dose and to do that we're gonna do IVIG so if they're infected with antigen A for example so they're infected with the A virus no such thing to my knowledge at least they're infected with the A virus we're gonna immediately give them antibodies those are gonna bind the A virus it's gonna get rid of it it's gonna form that uh, immune globulin antibody complex this will get excreted so we'll get rid of that so we'll get rid of all that A antigen all that A virus that's all gone person now is happy all right so that is why we give uh, passively immunoglobulins uh, also if a patient is immunocompromised uh, we might give them immunoglobulins because they won't be able to make their own also uh, if we are you know uh, going from no you know what I'll talk about that right now so another instance of immunoglobulin passive uh, immunity is going to be from mother to infant so this is another example so if the patient has I'm not going to go into the disease types however I'm just going to say if uh, if they have a disease or an exposure to a, to a disease then we will give them immunoglobulins that immediate immunoglobulin response can either be prophylactic or it could be a form of treatment and thus uh, passive immunity however another form of passive immunity is going to be from the mother to the infant and instead of infant it should be uh, in utero so the fetus in utero and what this will do is we're going to go from the mother's bloodstream through the placenta and into the fetus there's only one immunoglobulin type that can actually cross the placenta so there's going to be five different types uh, the only one that can actually cross is going to be IgG subtype so the immunoglobulin G subtype uh, typically tested uh, almost at any level which type of immunoglobulin can cross the placenta IgG alright so then we've got uh, from the mother to fetus also we can get from the mother to ooh, this should be an arrow to the newborn so the newborn and this is through breast milk uh, the breast milk and the typical uh, immunoglobulin that you're going to find through breast milk is going to be IgA so immunoglobulin subtype A and I'll, I'll make a video actually just after this about the different immunoglobulin types because I think they're important uh, so be, be tuned in um, I should have another video on this uh, immediately when you see this video um, immunoglobulin A so the IgA is going to cross uh, the blood milk the colostrum and it's going to coat the mucosal membranes so the the newborn will take in the breast milk um, and it'll coat the gut it'll coat the colon this IgA it'll coat when you hear IgA think membranes and specifically mucosal membranes so mucosal membranes uh, this is an example of where the mother is actually going to be making the immunoglobulin so here we made it either in the lab or another animal made it or another human made it and we separated it and we're giving it to the person passive immunity over here the mother is making it and the fetus is going to passively receive the immunoglobulin they're not actually making it for themselves they'll be receiving the IgG and here again the mother is going to be the uh, immunoglobulin factory the newborn is going to be the immunoglobulin leech they're going to take that immunoglobulin that has been passively made or that has been actively be, been made by the mother and they're going to passively receive it uh, so that's going to be kind of the basics about passive immunity now let's cover active immunity not as hard to remember because we make it 
So you've got an antigen, so using the example from before, you've got antigen A. So the A virus is going to present antigen A. And this is going to be uh, something that's foreign to our body. Our body doesn't like it. So we're going to have antigen A. What we're going to do is we're going to have B cells. We're going to have B cells, and those will have express M, H, C, class 2. Um, we're going to have B cells. We're going to have MHC class 2. The antigen will be expressed in MHC class 2 and class 1. MHC class 2 is intracellular. This is more extracellular. We're going to activate T helper cells. T helper cells will thus in turn activate our B cells. And our B cells will, if they're specific to this antigen, they will proliferate and they will start secreting antibodies. Plasma cells will secrete antibodies. Uh, they can also turn into memory B cells uh, for future infections. However, what we're going to do is we're going to create our own antibody. This antibody will then attack this antigen. So antigen is like the little marker for something foreign or for anything really. Um, but if we have a foreign antigen marker, our body doesn't like it, we're going to create our antibodies against that antigen, uh, forming an immunoglobulin antigen complex. So the immune complex will then be excreted by the kidney, uh, hopefully. All right, so that's the difference of active immunity versus passive. For active immunity, we make our own antibodies. For passive, we receive it from an outside source. Um, this active process, this all takes time. So our adaptive immune system is going to be working. Our adaptive immune system involves B cells in the humoral response. Humoral response simply just means we're making antibodies against it. Um, cell mediated means we're going to be using cytotoxic T lymphocytes primarily uh, to get rid of it. So this humoral response is going to be stimulated. We're going to see this foreign antigen. That foreign antigen will stimulate our B cells to proliferate uh, through the use of T helper cells as well. This B cell will proliferate. Plasma cells will secrete uh, antibodies while memory B cells will be there for the future. They may not be active right now. However, if there's another uh, antigen A, so like 10 years down the road, we see antigen A again instead of having to activate all the B cells and all that garbage, we can just activate memory B cells. They'll immediately start producing antibodies. Those antibodies will immediately act upon this A, taking care of, job well done. So our active immune system creates a memory response. So next time we see it down the road, we'll be able to have memory B cells, we'll have a memory to that antigen. Um, I believe that's all I really wanted to cover for this. Um, I just wanted to talk about the basic, basic, basics of active and passive immunity. Kind of contrast the two of them, what makes each one unique. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, I always enjoy getting questions. Otherwise, um, also likewise, I re enjoy reading your comments, um, however mean they are, however praiseworthy they are. Um, it either builds my ego or destroys my ego. So if you want to ruin my ego for the day, go ahead and leave me a nasty comment. If you want to build my ego for the day, leave me a great comment. I enjoy both, actually. Um, like the video if you enjoyed it, and subscribe for more. Thank you very much.